Hey everyone, Jeff here, also known as The Revit Kid. Welcome to another video. Today I'm actually going to be reviewing Lumion 10. Now Lumion is one of those programs that I've been reviewing for probably the last five, maybe even six years. If you haven't tried Lumion yet, I suggest you do. Before we jump into the video, if you enjoy the content on this channel and you're watching this video on YouTube, please make sure you subscribe below. This year, I've set a goal of trying to get 60,000 YouTube subscribers. Um, we're starting the year around 30,000, so I'm looking to double it. So please make sure you subscribe below, tell your friends, tell your colleagues, and together maybe we can make it happen. So first, let's start with what is Lumion. So Lumion is a real-time rendering program. It has the ability to take models from Revit, SketchUp, 3D Max, I believe AutoCAD, um, I mean, honestly, it actually imports um, uh, in a, a wide variety of 3D, 3D models. I personally use it for Revit, for obvious reasons. Um, but the great thing about Lumion is within a matter of minutes, honestly, you can take your Revit model, you can create a scene using all the great library, such as plantings, uh, cars, people, and so on. And you can pump out renderings that look extremely realistic, extremely fast. So if you're interested in viewing some of my old reviews, I'll link them below and in the blog post. Um, I think it's important that you check those out because as these reviews have, have evolved, um, they become less about whether you should or should not use Lumion. Right now, in my opinion, you should be using Lumion. If you are, um, if you have never used it before, then uh, definitely just jump right in and use Lumion 10. If you are using a really old a version of Lumion, maybe Lumion 5, Lumion 6, um, then you should definitely upgrade. If you're watching this review and that's what you're trying to get to, I'll tell you right now, upgrade. Around Lumion 8 is when um, the program started creating extremely photorealistic renderings. The renderings were great in 4 and 5 and 6 and so on. They, 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 were, they were useful, but around Lumion 8 is when they started introducing some serious shading and lighting, and um, you were actually pumping out images that looked phenomenal. And so the, the reviews I've been creating um, have, have sort of evolved into less about um, whether you should use Lumion, like I said, I think you should, and more about what the different features are and what the what I see as sort of the the new um, the new features you should look out for in the latest version of Lumion. So essentially, if you're in Lumion eight, nine, or maybe ten, obviously if you're on ten, it's a different story. But if you're in Lumion eight or nine and you're thinking about upgrading, um, then this is a great review for you because what I'm going to be doing is sort of talking about some of the new features and then talking about some of the little things that 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 they tweaked and changed that could possibly benefit you or you may find valuable. So if you haven't checked out my Lumion 9 review, you definitely should check it out because I had quite a few things to say about Lumion 9. Um, one of the things that they did in Lumion 9 is they completely re-engineered re the UI. Um, in Lumion 10, they've carried that forward and they've also changed uh, some other things. And so um, what you'll notice is that throughout most of this review, there's a lot of UI and um, dialogue, I guess, menu changes and stuff, most of them for the better, um, but uh, some subtle ones too. And so the first one is the um, the layers. So when it comes to layers in Lumion 10, um, there were a couple minor changes. Um, first, they uh, modified the graphic for the layers on the top of your screen, and they look more like tabs now. Pretty cool, I guess. Not really sure how beneficial it is. Um, you do have the ability to toggle on and off the layers, um, so they don't uh, they can stay on before you had to hover your mouse and you would see them. So I guess that's pretty cool. Um, tabs are what they are. Um, I guess visually it looks a little better. It doesn't really benefit the functionality of the software. And unfortunately, there's still only 20 layers. I've been asking for more than 20 layers for probably five years. For whatever reason, Lumion wants to limit it to 20 visibility layers. It is what it is. Um, the other thing that they added is when you select or multi-select objects, um, you have the ability to see what layers they are on, on the top right of your screen um, in a selection mode. And you also have the ability to move objects from one layer to another using this drop-down menu, which is pretty cool. 
Another user interface change that um, is welcomed is the material editor. So there's a couple things they did with the material editor. Um, the first is they uh, created a couple icons for saving, copying, loading, and pasting materials. Um, this is extremely helpful for um, pretty much any project, but especially when you're importing models, um, to be able to uh, copy a, a material quickly and paste it onto another piece of the model, or also to be able to save your material libraries out. Um, this, this function of copying and saving always existed in Lumion, but um, you had to click a couple menus and it was a little laggy, to be honest. And so uh, this is def definitely a welcomed addition. The other piece of uh, material changes that they made were displacement maps. So when I first heard that displacement maps were coming to Lumion, I was extremely excited. Um, we've kind of taken uh, bump maps or uh, relief is what Lumion calls them um, to the maximum level possible currently, um, the way I use Lumion. Um, using a relief map and also adding weathering was able to get us um, some textures that had quite a bit of, of movement and, and displacement essentially. And so when I heard that you were going to be able to use displacement maps, which for those of you that are not sure what that means, um, it's the ability to displace, literally displace, um, um, using a texture. And so something like a stone wall, for example, normally you would just use a relief or a bump map and you get a little bit of a texture, but a displacement allows you to actually move those surfaces based on essentially uh, um, a normal or a alpha or depending on what program you're using, a bump map. So really excited. Um, I got Lumion 10, opened it up, fired it up, and I realized that it only applies to um, built-in materials, and there's only a few of them. So great that they added displacement uh, maps, but not so great that you can't use them on custom textures yet. I'm assuming, and I hope that uh, in the future we will be able to use them on custom textures, but at the moment, cool feature, pretty limited. Uh, speaking of cool features that are pretty limited, planting. So as I mentioned in the intro and I've mentioned in many reviews of Lumion, one of the greatest things about Lumion is the extensive library you have. You have you know, thousands and thousands of people, plants, cars, trees, etc. And you even have the ability to bring in um, models from other software. So if you're a Revit user, for example, you can bring in 3D Max models. If you're a 3D Max user, you can bring in Revit models, SketchUp models, etc. And so you can create this extensive library of context for your scenes, which is awesome. And the um, planting to me has always been, it always looked pretty good. The trees, the, the plants, the, um, the grass, etc. The um, the only time you really notice that that maybe some of these are lower polygon um, plants are when you have really really close up shots. And to be honest with you, there are some nicer looking plants in the original library. Um, so you just kind of the trick was really just using the nicer looking trees and plants and stuff. Um, but either way, Lumion 10 they added um, fine detail planting, and so. Um, when I saw sort of the the marketing material, um, they made it sound like it was just high resolution plants within your library. So installing Lumion 10 and firing it up, I realized that it's actually a brand new category in the object tab. This was a little disappointing. Um, so the plants do look great. Um, as you can see, um, the, the, there's definitely a noticeable difference between the plants in the fine detail category and the regular plants. The problem is it's its own category now, so they're pretty limited. There's not that many trees, plants, or or, or uh, vegetation to use, and um, you also can't swap out existing plant category with the new fine plant category, which means if you have an existing scene and you decide, hey, I want to populate the scene with these new trees, you can't just take um, one of your existing trees, select them all, and then swap it with the library. You have to delete them and place these new fine detail trees. So take it for what it's worth, depending on what you want to use it for. Um, the fine detail trees do look better. They look great, um, but there are some drawbacks. Uh, the other drawback is if you place thousands of these trees versus the other trees, so the fine detail trees versus the normal trees, um, they will definitely bog your model down. So running through the list of some of the new features that Lumion 10 um, added, 
um, I decided to dig through some of the effects to see if there was anything new there. As I jumped into the effects window, I noticed that they changed the effects window. Uh, I didn't really notice any documentation on it, but uh, it looks like they, they flipped the tabs for the effects, which used to be across the top, the categories of effects. Um, they flipped them to the bottom, or to the side, I mean, and um, there's a little toggle that lets you turn on and off typical or favorite effects or something like that. Not sure why they did it. Um, I mean, sure, looks fine. Uh, I don't think that was a major functionality issue, in my opinion. The only thing I can think of is maybe this is one of those things where they're just preparing for a future feature or something like that, but whatever. So they uh, they changed the way the effects look fine. Um, so one of the new, uh, there are actually aren't that many new effects. They've updated a couple, but one of the new effects they added was this thing called AI Artist. And to be completely honest with you, not really sure why. Uh, this goes down as uh, one of those features where you think to yourself, why did they decide to spend time doing this within this software? And um, who was requesting this? I'm not really sure. Um, I'm not sure how many architects or designers um, would actually have requested being able to turn their design into a Monet style painting, but it is what it is. So I decided to give it a try. And as you can see, the results are a little disappointing. I know I'm not Monet, but uh, that image does not look much like Monet. So speaking of features that I'm not really sure who demanded it or why it's there. For some reason, they added the Northern Lights. Yeah, not really sure again why you would spend time and money making the Northern Lights in your software. So if for some reason you had this major desire to add the Northern Lights to your renderings, you can do it in Lumion 10 now. So the final new feature I want to talk about before we actually talk about the final rendering quality and how it compares to Lumion 9 is what um, Lumion calls um, high quality or HQ uh, rendering preview. This one I was definitely excited for as well. So for those of you who are not Lumion users, um, the way it works is um, you take a picture of a three-dimensional scene essentially, and then that gets rendered out. And so think of that as your camera view, um, whether it's an animation or a still, you have to take some sort of a picture and that's what you're working with is your preview window. As Lumion began adding more um, global illumination and shaders and real skies and all these different sort of um, actual rendering processes to it, what you get in your preview window and what you get when you're, your final render um, have, uh, there's a disconnect. Um, it used to be what you saw in your window was much more like what you got. But because you want higher quality and you're battling with um, computer speed and, and not wanting in, in a usable model, um, I could see why that was. So I was pretty excited that they added this feature where maybe I can quickly see a draft of the final lighting and stuff like the shading and stuff like that um, in the preview window, which would have been awesome or would be awesome. Um, so I jumped into Lumion 10 and uh, I took a scene from Lumion 9, updated some of the effects based on the new things. It usually does it by itself. And um, I left clicked and let it do the high quality preview. And what you'll see is that, um, yeah, it looks fine. Um, you're seeing somewhat of a pseudo render, but uh, when I compared it to Lumion 9's preview, which was not the high quality preview, what you'll see is that it's actually not much different. So that was a little disappointing. Um, I think if it probably lends itself to the right scene, um, you will notice a difference. Maybe the scene wasn't the best one to test on, maybe like a night scene or something with interior scene, maybe you would have noticed the difference, but I gotta be honest with you, the HQ preview and the normal preview in the Lumion 9 um, aren't that different in my opinion. So, cool idea. Um, hopefully uh, it continues to develop or maybe I'll see it uh, reaping the benefits on a different type of scene, who knows. Now that we've talked about most of the new features and my sort of opinions on them and how they compare to Lumion 9, for example, um, let's talk about the actual render quality of Lumion 10. So one of my biggest uh, sort of tests when a new version of Lumion comes out is to really just run a rendering, 
uh, in the previous version, in this case Lumion 9, and run a rendering in Lumion 10. And then look at how it compares. Um, and I'm looking at two things. I'm looking at the quality of what's created. Is there differences in shading, lighting, textures, etc.? Um, and also how long or how, how much longer or how much faster it renders. And so that's what I did. So I rendered the exact same scene um, on the exact same computer uh, in Lumion 9 and then in Lumion 10. And so what were the results? So first let's talk about the build mode. Um, in Lumion 9 I was getting around uh, 15 to 16 FPS and in Lumion 10 I was also getting around 15 to 16 FPS. So pretty much dead even. Um, as far as the renderings are concerned, in Lumion 9 the rendering took 1 minute and 16 seconds and that was the 4K uh, output. So a 4K rendering took 1 minute and 16 seconds. The same exact rendering, same exact settings in Lumion 10 took 1 minute and 22 seconds. So speed wise, I would say they're about the same. Um, I know over you know, five, four seconds or so, five seconds over a span of maybe 30 renderings or, you know, a, a video maybe it does add a lot more, but I think uh, we're, we're splitting hairs here. So rendering speed, exactly the same. Quality, let's take a look. As you can see, here's the Lumion 9 rendering, and it looks pretty good. This is the raw rendering, no Photoshop, and uh, here's the Lumion 10 rendering. So if we compare them side by side, I would say the quality is pretty much spot on. So what does that mean? Well, I think I'm coming to the same conclusion I did with my Lumion 9 review, and that is if you are currently using Lumion 9 and deciding whether you want to upgrade, I think you should think about a few of these extra features um, and see if they benefit you. If not, I think you wait and look for some more extra features or maybe look for Lumion 11. Um, I think the quality of Lumion 9 and the quality of Lumion 10 you're not getting much of a difference there, um, so that is what it is. If you're losing, if you're using Lumion seven, six, five, four, uh, then yes, upgrade to ten. Why would you just go, you know? But I think if you're using uh, eight or nine, uh, you could probably stay with eight or nine. To be honest with you, um, if you're not using Lumion at all, well then yeah, heck yeah, I get ten, right? <laughs> Um, and that's sort of where I'm at right now. I think um, if you're jumping into the game right now, um, then you might as well jump in at the latest and greatest version. If you already own 9 or 8, and um, and you're just looking for um, a reason to upgrade based on quality or speed, I'd say honestly, um, stick with 8 or 9. You're getting great quality anyways, and you're used to it. Um, unless, again, there's some of these features like maybe the Northern Lights <laughs> that are game changers for you in your rendering. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. I hope that gave you a little insight in Lumion 10, a little insight in Lumion in general. And uh, feel free to comment below. Let me know what you think if you have Lumion 10 or maybe 9 or 8 or if you're thinking about using it um, today. And uh, also, again, please subscribe. I'm trying to grow the channel. And uh, I'll talk to everyone later.